Here comes a new challenger. IQ episode 8. The deity of defense? Yeah, that was kind of a surprise. It's not important. It's about the size of your heart. <laughs> He's so relieved. He's so happy at the expense of this guy's height. Sad. They like him, clearly. Nishinoya. He's also a fan of volleyball. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> I, I don't know. I like people who are giving a praise like that. It's such a good tool. And it says so much about you. That is the best reason <laughs> I could have imagined. But I mean, did you really come to the right school? There is one girl here. Should have gone to the other school, the one we just played against. They had at least three. Respect. And there she is. <laughs> Good. Focused. Ah, got it. Ooh, we got... What? We got a lost soldier? Here it is. Here's what I, more what I was expecting. But I saw him break that mop in half. He's quite the personality. As if the cast of characters wasn't lively enough. Although actually, come to think of it, there's no real firecracker on the team yet. He fits that role pretty well. I can see him being really important for energizing them in key moments. And that kind of thing is uh, contagious, you know what I mean? You have someone who just gets pumped up, you just immediately feel it. And some people seem to be just limitless sources of that kind of thing. And then everyone's so mature that I feel like it'll be harnessed in a way that's productive. Him by himself, no good. Him as a leader, no good, maybe. Put him as a member of the unit. <laughs> But then again, they're saying he's quiet when he plays. Self-sacrificial. Did he also let someone down? Episode 8, He Who Is Called Ace. He looks like the, the Yu-Gi-Oh character. <laughs> I forgot his name. Guardian deity, yeah, guardian god. One thing I'm a little bit confused about though is like, they all rotate, no? So what does it matter what position they're in? Don't they all play all positions? Viable experts, please help me. But at least you're self-aware. <laughs> I just love the word senpai. <laughs> there is something special about those words though. I will say, we don't really have that in English. Like, for example, Korea has this built in where, because it's such a homogenous country, everyone's basically family. And if you're talking to someone who you have relative closeness to, who's older than you, there are appropriate words where you call them either older brother, older sister. But it's more than just words. There's a relationship that comes with it. There's a whole structure and responsibility. Just speculating here as an outsider, perhaps there, there can be a little bit of a danger of it being stifling, but in my experience, in my observation, there's something really nice about having those roles when both people respect them. Like if I'm calling someone older brother, it wouldn't work if the other person didn't play that role, but if it's done correctly, that means they're like looking out for me. Similarly, if someone calls me older brother, I'm immediately put into a place where I have to honor that. It doesn't happen often just because I'm not Korean, but I've noticed it's happening with increasing frequency the more I use Korean in daily life. There's an immediate extra bond that's formed when I hear those words and it's really nice. I really like it. I think in the West or just in English, we focus a lot less on age and rank. So it comes down to other things like just status and relative position in whatever the current meeting ground is. And the pros of that are there's a little bit more freedom to craft the role. And also there's less risk of somebody tyrannical abusing that position, like someone who just is not especially kind, kind of demanding respect, even though they haven't really done anything to earn the respect. At the same time, I think the con of that in the West that I've noticed being able to compare both is I think sometimes meeting new people in the West, there's sort of a jostling for position. Sometimes it happens where there's a little bit of a mind game going on and people are kind of one-upping each other in an initial interaction. Whereas in a culture where that's more defined, it is a lot easier to find that place. And in some cases, in my experience, structure actually creates more freedom. You know, if you know where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to do, then that eliminates some of the guesswork. It eliminates some of the awkwardness and you're kind of free to explore the role as it is and you can develop deep relationships through that. He's going back to the club. We all know. Keep these mops away from him. Admittedly, that's tough, yeah. A lot of his knowledge is just ingrained into his very body, muscle memory. 
スパイクなどの攻撃は禁じられていて、公園にいる選手と入れ替わって、常に守備を固めます。I see. Kind of. <laughs> I kind of get it. So he doesn't rotate to the front? Hey, just like Hinata. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They have a lot in common. Oh boy, you just. Oh, what are you doing? No awareness at all. So, where the hell is he? You're a one to talk. <laughs> there you go, that's more like it. Respect the spirit and believe in Hinata. <laughs> and he took that personally. I mean, with his personality, it seems like if he wanted to be the ice, he would ace, he would go for it. That's just by definition or by nature a very optimistic position, metaphor for his character. Never give up hope, fight till the end. Quick spike. A decoy, yeah. <laughs> his current role, but he can be both. Because it's not what he wants. You gotta be honest, Sinata. I mean, also, to be a good decoy, you gotta be a great spiker. He has to be a threat, which means he has to be good. He has to establish that he's amazing. And he will be. They're happy. They can feel it. They know where they're going. Yeah, yeah. It's palpable to the audience, too. They do that really well. I feel like he just stays grounded all the time. He's hopeful, too. Looks super young. But is this the coach they were expecting? They were saying Okai was going to come out of retirement, but is this the person they met? He's just scared. He's scared he'll like it. He also is running away from his legacy. This guy's journey is clear. It's the journey to find some kind of self confidence. This is the ace. What's his deal? Oh, is that what it was? He seems pretty humble. Maybe he just doesn't want the limelight. Seems very gentle, too. Uh, hovering around like fanboys. There he goes. There he goes. Asahi, now there's a name I can remember. This guy just wants to do his job, but has totally forgotten about it. That's what the volleyball team does to you. Just takes over your life, little by little. He also has a quiet power, a confidence, and a gentleness, which adds to the confidence. <laughs> he seems so adult, like not a high school student at all. Oh, but I saw that sad expression on your face. Only in his heart. Maybe he got burned out. How could anyone not like volleyball? The disgrace. Oh, he lost confidence. So much for that. He needed backup. He needed a little support. He needs to be reminded about the meaning of team. Everyone on this side of the net is your ally. I mean, just judging by the fact that he's so mature, he might have other responsibilities in life, you know, like a normal person. <laughs> like a family to take care of or something. Grades. Damn, the precision, though. It just makes it cooler. What's your problem? <laughs> if you're going to do something, you may as well yell at a thunder move. <laughs> Good training. Training and a match. I mean, this is sort of the challenge of the show, I guess, or a challenge. They have to always make every team seem formidable, repeatedly. Are they ever gonna like? Oh, I arranged a match, and you know they're kind of whack, but we gotta do it. Did he scam them? Did he lie? Did he promise things he doesn't yet have in hand? Was that an English pun for once? 
あ、そうしたのこと人一倍的に感じる性格だって言ってたけど、菅原さんもそんな感じしね。イエス、アイグリ。一人で勝てるわけないのにな。お前がそれ言え。He's Look at Angelo just fine. I mean, they <laughs> blazed through that rivalry and enemy ship so quickly and became friends. It's not for you. It's for our brothers. Ooh, I know exactly what he means. I know exactly. That's when you're defeated. If you can't even imagine it, that's tough. That's a really bad place to be. That's all the more reason why you have to do it. It really doesn't take much to turn it around. He's focusing so hard on failure. Just imagining it over and over again. It feels like it's the only thing that exists. Hinata is a good reminder. I mean, for sure, he's the ace. Right? But he's so humble that it doesn't, it doesn't resonate as deeply as the pain of like letting people down. Can you be a little bit more, <laughs> I don't know, gentle with Hinata? It's kind of intense. It's a lot. Where does he fit in though? Does he take Tanaka's spot? I have so many volleyball questions all of a sudden. And, I mean, he probably feels terrible, you know, it's probably like a, a circle where he took such a beating that that's now all he can imagine, he's so fixated on it. And, man, do I understand that state, not invaluable, but just in general, like, if you can't even imagine success, you know, even running through all the scenarios in your head when you're trying to dream, you can't even get there mentally as even an image you can conjure up, then that is really a tough place to start off trying to build anything better. But the truth is, even though it's really difficult, you just have to make yourself do it. Anyway, imagining success is imagining it from the from the place that you are right now. But you take steps incrementally and suddenly you're updating your tools and suddenly you have a, a new framework from which to conceptualize it. But also, I know very well that this feels worse. You're protecting yourself from pain, but it doesn't make it not painful. It's just a different kind of pain because you, you're aware that you still want it. You're aware that there are things you could be doing. It's hard to be satisfied with yourself sitting on the sidelines because something seems too difficult. Pain is pain, but there's different qualities to it. And I think the pain of hard work, you know, the pain of grinding towards something without seeing any upside or seeing any light at the end of the tunnel is better and, and less pervasive and less soul crushing than the pain of just having nothing, doing nothing. Especially for someone who has talent like him. Yeah, I mean, Hinata's doing it and has faith and has hope and has heart despite having a physical disadvantage compared to Asahi. He forgot what it meant to him. Of course he does. He's been hiding from it. It's scary. It's also tough to reach a high point and crash because now that hard work and that growth means just getting back to where you were, right? It doesn't even mean climbing to a, a new height, which is really where some of the best feeling is. If you push yourself to your limit and you start to see the rewards of that and you get to a high place, you become the ace, let's say, you're feeling great about that and then you lose it, suddenly you're facing the prospect of climbing up the same hill you've already climbed once before. And you're doing all that just to get back to the same challenge, the same level or plateau you hit the first time and there's no guarantee that you're gonna cross it this time either. So it's like, how do you even begin? How do you muster the strength to climb that hill again? I mean, one way to, I think, mitigate that or preempt that is to not burn out. Because if you're like burning out on the way up that hill the first time, it makes it less likely you're gonna try again the second time. Because you're inevitably gonna plateau. And a lot of times plateaus are followed by a certain dip. You know, like, I think the typical path is three steps forward, one or two steps backwards, right? But that one or two steps can be really discouraging and it can turn into five steps backwards. And the more exhausted you are, the harder it is to kind of shoulder that burden and push yourself back up again. I think momentum is huge and enjoyment is huge. The good news is it doesn't take much to trigger that again. It takes a moment of intense pain at the beginning or in the beginning steps, but things can snowball pretty quickly. It doesn't take that long to set a new framework 
of life or habits or you know conceptualization and man does it feel so much infinitely worse to just sit in the same place even if it's safe and even if it's comfortable it's a certain kind of hell to be sitting in a place that you know is not your potential the things that nag at you in the back of your mind that you want to do or want to try that are terrifying that just slip by day after day after day you pay a cost for that as well in its own way it's work it's mental work to suppress it and cope with it it's like rather than breaking an arm and putting a cast on it's like slow chronic pain day after day if that makes sense it's clear he's gonna join right but i mean his his state his mental state and also his path back to the team through inspiration of hinata and his teammates is is very relatable it's very understandable <laughs> <laughs>